Well, let's go back a little bit. You interned at Disney, yeah, which is a a highly coveted internship, yeah. I imagine. What what did what did Disney have you doing for them? So I was actually it's a really funny story. I was applying for a software engineering internship because obviously that's where my brain was. Being a computer mm -hmm. science major, I'll go be a software engineer. And specifically, I interviewed with the corporate division of Disney under the Enterprise Technology Division. Enterprise Technology oversees all of the employee facing technology for the entire mm -hmm. enterprise. Um, but then I got there and my boss was like, yeah, actually, the engineering team that requested you, they finished their project ahead of time. So we're just going to place you where we think you'd be a good fit. Mm -hmm. And I ended up getting placed with service management, which is very similar to product management management, but it's mm -hmm. usually uh, managing more mature and uh, legacy products, uh, software products. And so I was doing, I felt like I was doing everything. I couldn't really come up with like a finite job description for my mm -hmm. job. I was coding, I was building, but I was also writing. I was writing documentation. Mm -hmm. I was managing like software pilots that we were mm -hmm. like testing out new technology within the company. So I kind of just ended up doing everything, but that translated into me going into product management a year mm -hmm. after, which is now what I figured out that I love, and mm -hmm. it's the job that I'm starting in a month. Not that, at Disney, though. That's my next question. So what's the, you said you're starting your tech career. So, yeah. So what's coming up next? So I will be starting as one of several, actually, in the Apprentice Product Manager rotational program at Shopify. It was okay. a super competitive process this year. There was over 12,000 applicants, and I was, I felt so lucky to even be considered for it. But it was one of those things, again, the recruiter reached out to me on LinkedIn about it. Like, mm -hmm. it wasn't an opportunity that I necessarily went after cold. Mm -hmm. I already had some visibility and call it credibility, I guess, and brand recognition in going mm -hmm. into the interview process. Obviously, it takes a lot more to get past the interview process, mm -hmm. but that's what helped get me there. And so just another testament to building a platform on how, LinkedIn. How many rounds of interviews did you have to do for that job at Shopify? Three. So the Okay, first, that's not bad. I mean, yeah. there are companies that are doing like seven or eight rounds of interviews right now. Yeah, personally, I'm not a big fan of those. I think you Agreed. should be able to figure out if a candidate is a good fit for a Agreed. job within like two to three, and I had Agreed. three. So I had a recruiter screen, I had a mini case interview, and then I had an extended case interview. Okay, very cool. All right, so shifting gears a little bit. You're clearly in pageants. Yes, yeah. Um, we know friends of the show, friends of Tech Alley, folks like Lisa Song Sutton, really great career women, investors, entrepreneurs, that kind of thing. They've all been through pageants. Yeah. What did, what did pageantry teach you about leadership? What did it teach you about business? What did it teach, you know, all, how, how what lessons are you taking from that that you're applying in your upcoming tech career? You know, it's amazing because, you know, pageants have a lot of negative stereotypes around them, but I honestly think pageantry is one of the best leadership and business trainings for women. So I actually got into pageants, honestly, to boost my confidence. I used to, the person that you hear today was not the person I was when I was younger and I got in it really to just not be scared talking in front of people. How old were you when you got into it? I, well, my mom put me in like glitz pageants when i was really really young it's, it's always was, the mom yeah yeah but then i started getting into like pageants where i actually had to talk and take it seriously when i was 12 and that's when i actually started taking it seriously but i mostly did it in middle school and high school for the scholarships mm -hmm. because miss america gives out literally hundreds of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. in scholarships every year and actually did help me go and pay for my school and graduate debt free mm -hmm. but as far as leadership and business you as you know a local title holder or a state title holder or even the national title holder you are a leader in that you're a role model. You are someone that young women look up to. And not mm -hmm. only young women, but the entire community. The entire community looks to you to set an example with what you do. And so, and for me, that's like my leadership style is leading mm -hmm. by example, but also servant leadership, serving your community and getting out there and showing that you are not only a representative and an ambassador of your community, but you are a servant of your community. And so it certainly taught me so much about leadership. But as far as business, it I really feel like it should be called like a pageant MBA or something because <laughs> You know, in pageants, specifically with the Miss America system, you have to think of your title and your year as a business. Mm -hmm. Number one thing that we have to do is raise sponsorships, and that's to support the scholarship fund. So mm -hmm. I raise every year I raise money for the Miss Nevada scholarship fund, and we have to go out and get sponsors to help mm -hmm. pay for not only the scholarships, but also the expenses that come with participating in a pageant. And then also, it depends on uh, what you decide to do. We have this thing called a community service initiative. Mm -hmm. Mine is actually my nonprofit, which is called Innovate Her. And so not only are you raising sponsorships, you're raising money for your nonprofit. So as a second thing, Miss America especially really places emphasis on building your social media presence and building visibility through social media. Mm -hmm. And so you have to figure out how to grow your social media. You have to figure out a strategy for that. You have to play all of these different types of roles. You have to be a fundraiser. You have to be a social media manager. You have to be a community uh, volunteer. And you're 
in a sense, like kind of the CEO of like this brand of your title. But I mean, also Lisa Sun is someone I admire very, very much. So I'm glad you brought her up. Yep. But yeah, pageants has taught me so much about business and leadership. It really should be packaged into some sort of like, you know, pageant MBA or something, but I would not be the, and I've now I've started my own business. I have my personal brand that I monetize. I'm also building a marketing agency, okay. uh, which is not easy being fresh out of college, but all of the stuff that I've learned in pageants has helped me get to this point. Uh, I would I'll, not be here and I wouldn't be the leader or business person I am without pageants. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I think all of us need to be thinking about all of our businesses as uh, some kind of media agency mm -hmm. at this point and getting our personal brands out there. Well, that is all That is all super fascinating. Uh, I am gonna have to have you on my other podcast, which is all about leadership and business at some point. We can have a very in-depth discussion about Absolutely. the pageant MBA. You heard it, you heard it on live from Tech Alley first, the pageant MBA, <laughs> hashtag it pageant MBA. 